So now let's take a look at the second domain, which is the network intrusion detection system. The breach objective for such a system is that how to steal valuable data from the target. So now there are many factors in that. First of all, the botnets, the remote command and control servers communicate with the compromised system to give instructions on operations to execute. So this is the one type of traffic that you can have, or this is one type of data or one type of activity that you will be looking in the network. Similarly, you can have APTs, hackers that can remotely access the machine through a vulnerable or misconfigured service allowing them to shell or, or root access uh, on a machine. We also have adware communication with external server. Uh, uh, they also require communication with the external server for downloading unsolicited ad content. And we also have spyware. The result of covert monitoring are often transmitted over the network to an external streaming server. So these are all the communications and many others as well that are being done on the on the network. And the basic purpose of the network intrusion detection is to identify all these type of traffic uh, through the traffic analysis. Now, software for nets that are available, we have TCP dump. We have complex sniffing tools like Bro as well, Wireshark. Uh, Bro is a more like a programmable ver version of Wireshark. Many useful scripts for uh, doing detailed protocol analysis. We so we have network intrusion detection software which collects signals from the network traffic of all sorts and operate on the basic concept of inspecting traffic that passes between the host. Attacks can be identified either by matching traffic to a known signature of the malicious traffic. This is one way of doing things. Mostly the security products are using signatures to uh, perform the uh, uh, to to see that which traffic is malicious, but the anomaly detection system they they have more sophisticated coverage, so they compare the traffic to a previously established baseline. One example of such network intrusion detection system, which is open source as well, very widely uses Snort. It sniffs the packets and network traffic for real time anomaly detection and somehow it is a de facto choice although there is a new version uh, there is uh, an enhanced and scalable version of the snort with many more other features as well called suricata which is also open source uh, it provides a good balance of usability and functionality it is backed by vibrant open source uh, community as well a lot of research projects are being done on snort User can perform real traffic, uh, real time traffic analysis on IP networks and uh, they write rules uh, which are kind of signatures which matches with the traffic. So you can uh, look at an example rule which is mentioned in the last of the slide here. So we have an alert uh, which will be generated on the TCP protocol if uh, not of this IP with this protocol talks to this IP and on this port. So this means like uh, other than this 192.168.1.0 uh, if talk to uh, uh, to uh, any other IP on this port so uh, we will have and if it has a content of this thing and so we it will message uh, uh, in the log message uh, we will have an external Moundy access uh, which will be noted down by the snort. Now, what are the parameters? So when we extract the traffic from the traffic uh, from the metadata of the network, so we, uh, we perform stateful packet inspection. There are two types of uh, packet inspection. So we have stateful packet inspection and we have a deep packet inspection. Uh, stateful packet inspection primarily works at the network and transport layer and it examines each packet's header and footer without touching the packet context or packet payload. 
and associate newly received packets with previously seen packets. The SPI system check whether a packet is part of a handshake or it is part of an existing network connection or it is an unexpected ROG packet. It is useful in maintaining access control policies and many uh, layer three or four attacks like IP spoofing, TCP IP attacks and denial of service attacks that can be uh, uh, mitigated with the help of SPI system. There are limitations associated with SPI system as well. So because it restrict analysis to just packet headers and footers only. On the other hand, the deep packet inspection is a more uh, detailed view of the packet content. But a disadvantage of this type of packet inspection is that uh, you cannot perform deep packet inspection on the encrypted traffic. So inspecting traffic, uh, network traffic content process of examining the data which is encapsulated and then you perform DPI to see the spam, the malware, the intrusions or any other anomalies that are going on in the network. Uh, the challenging part uh, of the DPI is, the, is to decrypt the disassembling part and then perform the analysis at a very high speed. Bro is another network intrusion detection system. It is also called passive network monitoring system because it works on a passive port and it has two components. It has efficient event engine and it has a policy engine as well. Uh, the policy engine actually contains many useful scripts that consume events and it, uh, these policy scripts actually uh, generates very useful logs as well. Uh, similarly, it has it can detect uh, suspicious activity at the uh, at the web application side as well. So it can inspect the strings which are present in the post body of the HTTP request. These, this is an example of a bro log, uh, which is very detailed by the way. So you can have fields like, for example, you can have a TS uh, whose type is time and you can see an example of the time over here as well. Similarly, you have an UID for identification of the log and you have a string and then you have an example of a, uh, uh, of a ID uh, through a uh, UID sorry through which we are going to identify the log and similarly all other fields and their types and their example is also given. Deep packet inspection for anomaly, anomaly detection depends on the nature of the application which operate on your network. So you have uh, a kind of different applications which are operating on your network. So you have to set your objective for uh, for doing anomaly detection uh, for applications. Uh, DPI for transport layer or secure socket layer, you, you have to terminate your SSL first of all at your DPI system. So essentially a DPI requires an anomaly detection system which can perform man in the middle as well. If the communication uh, is passing through a secure link, you cannot perform anomaly detection through DPI. The communication which is going through the inspection point is no longer end-to-end -end secure because we are doing men in the middle and we are actually decrypting the traffic and then encrypting it again uh, for passing it to the uh, target host. Now we look at the web application intrusion detection. So we inspect the HTTP server logs and we try to obtain many features. There are many web servers which are available. We have Apache, IIS or Nginx or many other like Tomcat as well. So what we do is that the logs that are actually generated by these web servers, we try to, uh, we try to do feature engineering on those logs. This is an example of an HTTP log where you can see we have an IP, we have a user agent as well. So what we do is that we try to uh, gather a lot of useful information like IP level access statistics, the URL string which is used to access the, uh, the web service, the URL, uh, a decoded URL, HTML entities. We try to see that if this IP uh, is sending a different requests from different user agents, for example, that can be a parameter for anomaly detection. And we also look at many other parameters as well. For that, we need to go deep into 
different log entries and try to make the sense so the basic purpose of anomaly detection in all these three domains that we have listed is to see it the change from the perspective of the time series so you have to think of a change first of all in your own mind so as a security expert you have to think of a particular log entry that for example i i just listed one scenario and that scenario is that for example uh, in this uh, in this request that you can see over here that this IP if it is making requests from different user agents like for example it is using Chrome it is also using a Mozilla Firefox it is using Opera as well so you become suspicious about this IP this is just one simple example of an anomaly detection system that you can build uh, 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 with the help of time series data that we have already discussed that's all from this module and uh, I, I see you in the next topic of, of module. Thank you.